Hey everybody, it's Geekopolis here. So, I recorded this video and it did not save, so here I am trying to do it again. So, let's just get right into this, because I'm a little bit annoyed with that. So, recently I did a video talking about who I believe was one of the most wasted potential characters in the sequel trilogy, that being Finn, given what his backstory could have been and the development the character could have had, compared to what we actually received. Uh, however, there were plenty of characters, uh, upon further analysis, that can take that role of most wasted potential in the series. Um, the one I mentioned in that video being a um, possible contender to that was Kylo Ren, which is whom I will be speaking about today. Now, <coughs> Kylo Ren... Um, I'll just talk about what we see from him in these movies, and then I'll talk about what I believe he could have been or should have been uh, based off of just a rough uh, d uh, description of what the character was without any further context. Now, uh, in these movies, we see him be pretty much nothing more than just a petulant child who constantly throws temper tantrums and cannot uh, really hold a scene in terms of believability or intimidation or any level of consistency with the writing of the character itself. He was written in such a way where it really didn't convey to the audience whether he was on the good guy side or the bad guy side, not because of his actions. His actions were pretty consistently um, that of a villain, although he never felt like a villain. He felt more like a rival, a rival to Rey, someone who has no training and uh, didn't even really believe in the Force until, what, a day before they fought? Or the day of, for all I know. And he is beaten by her, which makes him feel not like a villain or a threat, but like a rival who's trying to keep up with the protagonist. Not someone to challenge the protagonist. Which I feel like is one of the fundamental little issues with his character. Um, the other fundamental issue being, again, his... The way he was written to... I understand what they're going for with the conflicted nature, because they wanted him to kind of be a... Uh, he is a Vader ripoff, is what he is, but they wanted him to be sort of um, like an homage to Vader, kind of honoring him in a way. And I, I have no problem with uh, Kylo perhaps uh, using Vader as a motivation to do what he does. That's not really my issue. It's the way that it is, um, you know, portrayed in these in these movies is, is where I draw my criticism because it doesn't feel like he's trying to, you know, be like Vader. He tr feels, or maybe it feels like he's trying to be too much like Vader, but in a way he just doesn't. Either way, I feel that the character is just very weak because of that. Because they want him to be a different character than himself. The the execution, I, I think I was trying to get at, is done so poorly, in my opinion, that when you try to ask somebody who likes his characters, what, um, what would you say is something that defines Kylo? I fail to think of an, of an answer to that that is satisfying. Granted, I don't like these movies, so maybe if somebody that does like them could tell you, I believe one of the um, arguments made for him was his inconsistency in his, um, what is it, like, unstable... Stableness is something that is a trait that they find desirable in a villain, I've heard. Um, I disagree. I prefer a villain, or an antagonist at the very least, to be consistent in what he's conveying. Is he menacing? 
Is he intimidating? Is he cunning? Is he intelligent? Is he is he manic? And if he is manic and he is um this this insane type character, this this unstable, unruly rage type um person, then have it be that way the entire time. Because it doesn't really know what it wants to be from scene to scene. And let's just take him from each movie. The Force Awakens, he was like still in training and, and, and implied, but he was allegedly very powerful, but then gets beaten by the protagonist, which makes him completely non threatening to the rest of the series, because I already know he is not going to beat the protagonist. The rest of the series are not going to have him win in the end. So I know he was never going to win at that point after well, Force Awakens. Last Jedi, he had to be saved by Rey when he betrayed Snoke, which is his only real victory, in quotes anyways. Um, he only killed Snoke because he caught him off guard and basically stabbed him in the back. So, okay. Doesn't really tell me much. And then, again, while fighting the guards, Rey had to save him. It's it's just it's annoying to see a character that could have been so unique and yet familiar be denigrated in such a way that it is considered a non character well I was gonna say non character, but that's more of Ray. He's more of a just poorly written character. So and then the final movie, the um, Rise of Skywalker, he did seem at least a little bit intimidating because he actually beat Rey for a split second, so that was something. Um, but then the final fight, he just gets thrown off a cliff and does absolutely nothing, which I feel is a completely missed opportunity. You could have done a lot with that scene in particular, where if it was Kylo to be the one that defeated the Emperor and died in the process, and in turn redeemed himself, I would have been fine with that. I That to me seems more of a fitting end and a respect to the title of the story, Rise of Skywalker, instead of having a Palpatine defeat Palpatine. <sighs> it's just awful. And then, you know, stealing their name, which I plan on doing a video on that sometime this week. But, um, yeah, he just ends up dying because he saves Ray or whatever, the force healing life transfer, whatever, resurrection bullshit. So the only movie he ever felt even at all intimidating, he ends up dying in a very anticlimactic way. Now on to what I believe the character could have been. Oh, one more thing I wanted to mention. The swordsmanship in these prequel in them sorry in the sequels are awful. Prequels it was really good. In the sequels it was awful. The duels far and few they are between feel messy, clunky, the choreography is dreadful, there is no semblance of any style, not even Realistic, the medieval swordsmanship. Not even uh, Star Wars forms, uh, form one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, for instance, like um, defensive style, form three, Obi Wan Kenobi used, or an aggressive style uh, that focuses on heavy uh, blows, like Anakin, or a more. Um, Elegant duelist style uh, form two, like Dooku against uh, other lightsabers, or form seven, uh, which Mace Windu and uh, uh, Emperor Palpatine used, Darth Sidious, uh, for example. But yet they don't have any of that in here. They just swing wildly, like they're just trying to hit each other with clubs. It's it's so ill-formed the techniques, and again, that's one of my my grievances. 
He should have been an absolute master with a lightsaber, considering he was trained by Luke under all these. He, he, he was trained by Snoke. There was the, the lessons from the Jedi texts that should have absolutely explained the fighting forms. But no, he just... It's pretty much the same as Rey, who is an untrained, uh, complete novice. They seem to have exactly the same fighting style. Just swing at each other. Not, I'm sorry, not at each other, at each other's weapons. Because they never actually go for a killing blow. If you look at how they're fighting, they're always aiming towards the weapon. And it's, it takes me completely out of the fight. Now on to what he should have been. To me, first of all, he should have been intimidating. He should have been at least somewhat intelligent and competent. He should have absolutely defeated Rey in the first movie. And the second, to really drive home that point that this is a person who is very powerful. And it's not going to be easy to overcome. Then, you should have him have an interesting backstory. Explain why he turned. Talk about... What made him join Snoke? What, who is Snoke? What was about him made Kylo want to join him and betray Luke and the Jedi Order? First, take that fucking scene with Luke Skywalker attempting to kill him out. I get, I understand the theme of it. I don't give a shit about your theme if your theme completely clashes with what three other movies and the original basis for this universe. Yeah, fuck off. So, explain why. That's something in writing that I feel has been lost these days. People stop explaining why. They just say, this is what it is. And no, that does not mean I want every single scene to be large exposition dumps. I just want things to make narrative and logical sense while I'm... While I'm consuming that particular form of media, because if it doesn't, it immediately takes me out of it, meaning I cannot enjoy it. I hate when people say, well, just enjoy it for what it is. That's so stupid. I'm trying to enjoy it. I can't, because it's filled with idiocracy that I cannot, in good conscience, ignore. Now, what else? Again, make him proficient with the Force, and... A lightsaber. Give him more motivation than just, I don't know, I liked Vader, he seemed cool. It, that's pretty much all I get from him. So, I, I don't know, he just wants to rule the galaxy because he does whatever. It's stupid. This is, again, the issue with not defining what your characters are and just having them be. Also, I believe that he should have had a unique ability. And he I thought they were going to give him a unique ability to begin with when he did his, the whole freezing the plaster bolt. That was cool. It was a good scene for about two seconds. And once that was finished, they never really returned to it. I think it would have been interesting if he would have used that power on Snoke, and Snoke had never seen it before, and that's how he kills him. That would have been interesting. Better than him just kind of knifing him in the back. Also... I was hoping they would explain this, and this is not just the sequel's fault, this is pretty much all of them. Maybe I just don't have enough um, outside information to answer this question, but you know how Snoke was just throwing around Rey in the throne room scene before he was killed? Why don't they just do that constantly? Like, they never make it clear why they don't. I mean, I guess you can say most people just aren't powerful enough to do that. And I'm sure there is a reason I would have to look it up, but they never explain that in the movies, so I think I'm perfectly justified in, in asking that question. Um, so, yeah, I feel like that would be just, just another thing that should have been answered because it's just a question I've always really had. And I would like to be answered in the movie. I don't want to go read a book or something about it to find out that answer. <clears throat> But, I still might. So yeah, he <clears throat> he is, with with the new form that I have given him, the, the, the new ideas that I have just stated, believe 
the character would have been something that they can actually rely on and lean on in the series, instead of having to constantly call back to the old characters and resurrect fucking Palpatine from the dead. No, I do have a video on how I believe he could have came back without it completely ruining the originals, even, you know, operative word being completely. But, still, if you would have made these characters ones that people like, and actually made them live up to their full potential, like I, I'm trying to address here, I mean, think about it. This is a Skywalker, the son of Leia and Han. And they do this with him. Basically nothing. Except make him the most emo character in Star Wars. I mean, you pe people complain about Anakin all day long. And that's fine. I, I understand that. I like Anakin. But I get the criticism. I really do. But if you're not going to complain about this, then you're full of shit. And you are in you are not holding the same standards per movie. But I just think with a being him being a Skywalker, being the son of two of the main characters in the originals, they should have done a lot more. At least to respect the past. You know? Build upon it. Make it interesting. Have fun with it. It's Star Wars. Anyways, um let me let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um how would you have changed uh, Kylo? I didn't, I didn't get too specific into every little detail, because I may be working on a series that does that. But this is just my general thoughts upon what the character could have been, and why I believe his potential was absolutely wasted. Because he could have been so cool. He never used Force Lightning, he never used anything besides that one freezing power that was interesting or unique to the Force to, identify, to differentiate himself from other Sith. Or he never even really claimed to be a Sith, granted, but still, he's clearly on the dark side. Anyways, let me know what you guys think, and if you like the video, please do like it, share it around, um, really will help me out. Uh, thank you, Geekopolis, out.